Hello, many thanks for joining the first edition of Journalist Hangout this week. I'm Ayodele Ozubakun. Today on the Hangout, Dogara L5 trade words on transparency of the National Assembly budget. Stop losing corruption cases. Buhari wants EFCC, ICPC, and later on the program, Trump to sell attack planes to Nigeria for war against Boko Haram. I'll be hanging out with Babaji De Kolade Utitoju, Lekon Shote, and Mayor Akipelu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Nasir Erufai is arguably one of the most controversial governors in Nigeria today. Before becoming the governor, he was a fierce critic and an unrepentant polemicist who joined others to end the reign of the People's Democratic Party at the center in 2015. Last Friday, he assumed the role of a critic once more when he challenged the National Assembly to be transparent in its budget and tell Nigerians how much each lawmaker earns. But as brilliant as this observation sounds, it <laughs> reeks terribly, terribly of hypocrisy. No wonder the, speak, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Jakubu Dogara, dared other state governors to begin <clears throat> the supposed transparency by telling Nigerians how they are paid, what they spend monthly as security votes, and also publish what happens to local government funds. Does Zerufai have the moral authority to challenge the National Assembly? Let me start from Mayor. Hmm. Yes. There was a conference and Erufai attended that uh, particular conference and he actually reiterated what a lot of Nigerians have been saying, that the House of Representatives, uh, the National Assembly, will still don't know what you take home and your allowances are, you know, just outrageous. And again, Baka Bukala Saraki promised Nigerians that the 2016, for the 2017 budget, that they are going to make sure they publish their earnings and spendings. But till now, we've not seen it. That's since last year. So now Sirerufa is now throwing this to them. Yeah, I think um, they cannot do that because if they publish what they earn and their entitlements, Nigeria will be scandalized because our assembly members um, are probably the best paid in the world. Hmm. And I think I'm with Sirerufa on this because I think we have the right to know. I think a lot of them get paid for doing nothing. If you go to the National Assembly, it's only very few legislators that actually do the job of lawmaking. Most mm -hmm. of them don't even show up at all. Mm -hmm. When they do, they don't make any comments. They just Some go will there. Be sleeping. Yes, they just go there. They just go there, collect entitlements, and wait for the next time that the money will come. But I also agree with um, Dogara that the same thing is happening in the States. Because I still believe that what our governors are in as security votes is scandalous. And yes, I, I know that there is need for a governor to have votes to take care of security and emergencies. But it is it's like a slush fund for governors because they don't, it's, they're not, they don't make accounts of, all the, of how the money was spent. So it's easy for you to budget a lot of money for yourself and just enjoy yourself at the expense of people. So both sides of the divide, both members of the National Assembly and the, the executive shares to tell us how they spend our money. Jile, last week, I think we were, we were just joking. No, we weren't joking. We were talking, <coughs> we were discussing in the newsroom when I said there's a particular state in the Southwest that, that goes home with 250 million. That's about the poorest states in the Southwest in terms of IGR and um, earnings from federal government that goes home with 250 million security votes. So we're now calculating it this times 12 and times four years. What that will amount to, somebody is paid 250 million and not that this security votes, it's something that is unaccounted for. It's never audited. It's never audited and everything. But so let's look at the two sides of the divide. Erufai is playing to the gallery again. He's playing the populist game again. Oh, I don't uh, think that Erufai was playing to the gallery. You see, everyone who has had one reason or the other to advise the National Assembly has told them to be transparent. In 2015, the PDP uh, members in the National Assembly, they organized a retreat and they invited Nuri Badu 
to come and address them. Just Never. similar to, of course, Nuri Badu and Erufai, they are friends, you know, long-term friends. It was that retreat, you know, it was that retreat that uh, Nuri told them, see, Nigerians are not happy about the fact that you have not made your spendings transparent. Nobody knows what to earn. Nobody knows anything about your budget. Remember, we brought a man, maybe you remember one program that we had here, we brought a sitting senator. And the moment he was asked on live television to tell Nigerians his salary, he refused. Mm. I remember I, was, I watched, I was here on that day. Senators treat their, their earnings like a cult issue that other Nigerians do not deserve to know. You know the salary of uh, former president, U.S. President Obama, for example. Yes. You know how much the American president earns, but we do not know how much our senators earn. Mm. The allowances are even bigger than their wages approved by the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission. But they have not made anything transparent as, as far as it concerns their spending. One of the reasons why they decided to punish Aline Dume was because Aline Dume, a few weeks back, shortly after he lost his, chairman, his uh, position as majority leader, mm -hmm. advised that the Senate should make his, uh, his uh, finances transparent. I'm sure you remember. Mm. It, that was what pained it probably pained them more than even what he said about Nuri Badu. You know? So that I mean or about uh, about, Dino, about Dino. Okay. What he said about Dino probably didn't even pain them as much as that one. Remember also that the whistleblower in the House of Reps. Yes. Yeah. Who, who demonstrated to Nigerians how Dogara, you know, and other people cornered a sizable portion of the budget was chased out of this country, humiliated him, suspended him, locked up his office, continued to harass him, you know, until the man fled Nigeria. So, any, you can advise the Senate and House of Reps, but they are not going to listen. They know, just as uh, the uh, mayor said, that if Nigerians should know what they earn, that there will be riots on our streets. So they are not <laughs> going to tell you how much they earn. If you like, put a gun to a senator's neck, he will not tell you how much he earns. Hmm. Hmm. Leko, what's uh, your take on this? Well, <clears throat> I did sort of background and found out that first, the Constitution says that allocation to the um, legislative arm is a direct charge to the Consolidated Revenue Fund which means that we may be able to have an idea of at least the flow of how much goes into that. Then, if you look at what looks like uh, their remuneration profile, it says, for example, that um, a senator probably goes home in a, in a year with about 2 million and 200,000 naira or 200,000 naira thereabout. And then, it now begins to say his rent is 250% of that. His uh, newspaper allowance is 15% of that. Wardrobe. His, his wardrobe is maybe 70% and begins to, you know, climb. And even though I'm an accountant, I, at the point I got dizzy, I was like, oh. okay, this is... It's inconvenience allowance. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, that's one. So and then there was an attempt last year. They told us that the, the budget, the lump sum, allocated to the um, legislative arm is 115 billion naira. Yes, one, uh, between 150, 120 one, one around 15. to 150 and that, billion uh, naira. About 102 or thereabout is for the current expenditure. My salaries are all that. That's right. I have worked in government and I know some, there's something called O&G, which is equivalent to what the governors are using. It's called office and general expenses. You can pretty much put anything under that. Under that something. Like a slush fund. It's, you can, it's just like a security uh, fund. <coughs> you know. And um, but essentially, the constitution says that there must be audit of the expenditure of the budget, which means the what is allocated to the legislature is part of the budget. It has to be audited mm -hmm. and presented to the public. I think that is followed in the bridge. Mm. 
And then we can then look at security. As for me, I don't support, I'm not for security fund. Uh, practically everything that has to do with security has been budgeted for. DSS, which is a secret service, has been budgeted for. DMI has been budgeted for. Practically every security uh, outfit has been budgeted for. What is the purpose of the security group? Well, okay, then the data is PR, and then you know, they use it to settle some other things. Maybe give PR. No, that could be emergencies. To, to no, that could, that could be, that okay. could be emergencies. Let me, let, 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 let me quickly, that the government can let me quickly take this breather. Let, let me quickly take this breather. When we come back, we still stay on this topic. It's still journalist hangouts. Join us after this break. Welcome back. Still journalist hangout in case you're just joining us. And we are looking at the, um, the challenge given to um, the National Assembly by Governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Arufai. And in return, Yakubu Dogara is saying, um, Julie, let me start this one from you. Yakubu Dogara is now saying that, yes, Mr. Governor. He was challenging the governor to champion the uh, transparency yes. and the spendings local by, by uh, governors. governors. How, what do you do to local government funds? Yes. How do you spend so your you want to tell us about security uh, votes. votes? You see governors in the name of this uh, so-called joint uh, account. account. States, governors local deny local governments of funds to execute their own plans. Governors will now decide what projects should happen in some local governments. And if as a local as a local government chairman you, you tell a governor of that why should you be tampering with our money, he will suspend you, he will kick you out of uh, out, out of office. Yes. They've done that with same governor suspend local government chairman. Now now what Dogara Dogara as speaker of the House of uh, Reps has championed the cause of local government, actually autonomy, local government autonomy. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that governors should not be tampering with the funds of local government. You see, these governors have a problem. You give them so much money, they have access to hefty, humongous uh, security votes, yet they fail to keep their eyes away from local government funds. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for Dogara to take uh, pot shots at uh, Erufai by saying, look, you should start by advising your own colleagues. Because we know what they do with local government funds. A lot of the projects that local government should actually uh, take credit for, it is the governors that are taking credit for those projects. Because they are not giving local government chairmen access to funds that have been uh, sent to them from the, from the federation account. You know? So I think that both arms of government, the lesson from this, according to uh, Mr. Dugara, is that, look, transparency shouldn't be limited to us. Let judiciary be transparent. Mm. Let the executive be transparent. Let the National Assembly be transparent. But I would have expected Dugara to first ensure that from his own end and from Saraki's end, that appears like a miracle to me if it happens. <laughs> from Saraki's end, let's see transparency. Then it is at that point that you can stand on, on rooftops and begin to tell others that, look, you too must be transparent. It's not enough to just uh, deflect the, the, um, the, you, the you, advice you <laughs> and say, look, you too, you must do it. Do it and let the world praise you that you are transparent. Going by what the uh, whistleblower, the amount he alleged that uh, you know, the, the House of Rep members padded into uh, their budgets. Mm -hmm. And I think the minimum was like one billion naira for a, a, a minority leader per year because the way they were going see, to share. What, what happened in the National Assembly is that because over time, you know, the National Assembly, unlike the executive, is an evolving, evolving institution. So initially, when they started, they didn't really have <coughs> a lot of funds because I've had the opportunity to work within that environment. So what they've done is to now make the the officials who are the principal officers, principal officers to, to turn them to like, like an executive on their own. Mm. They believe that, oh, if you are, if you are, if you are uh, the senior president over time believes that <coughs> I'm the number three citizen, I should be more important than a governor. So mm. you, in the office of the senior president, you will now see that they now created some funds 
where you can use to do whatever he likes, like, like a governor security votes. Mm -hmm. So when, because the principal officers, they just, because most times what they do in National Assembly is to share the budget. That's mm -hmm. what they do. They share the budget. So they would just say, okay, this is what is going to accrue to this senator. This is what is going to accrue to the principal officers. My, my. You understand? Which, that's why I said, if people know how much they actually hate or they are emoluments, that will be killed, that will be, that will be crisis. And they know that. But their own argument, I agree, uh, the argument is that the transparency should be across board. Mm. Because, like, like he said, in, in, in case of the local government, even the local government chairman themselves, the little that they are giving, they are not even spending it to do anything. To just to even fill, to fill portals in their neighborhood, they don't do that. So everybody mm. just collect the money, share it, and have a good time. Lekons, <laughs> rest on this, <laughs> your party shots. <laughs> well, I'll just say that, uh, just look at the thinking of Karl Marx, who says that, in a capitalistic environment, he says, when you have the thesis going against it, the antithesis going against the thesis, you don't have a synthesis. Maybe when they begin to talk about this, we will end up with a solution mm -hmm. to this problem. Mm -hmm. Moving on now, last week, the Federal Executive Council, Federal Government, suffered sh shameful defeat in its anti corruption fight in just 96 hours. It lost four high profile cases, disappointedly. The EFCC lost its bid to continue to freeze Michael Zekomen's 75 million naira and former first lady, then patient Jonathan's $5 million. The case against Justice Ademola and his wife was struck out because the Department of State Services could not prove enough evidence to nail them. The Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, could not justify the case against the former Minister of Niger Delta, Gusti Erubebe. President Mohamed Buhari is disappointed. So are Nigerians. He has called on the anti graft corruption agencies to step up their game and put their house in order. What does this say about the ongoing corruption war? Jide. Well, it's, it's, it says that the anti corruption war is in danger. Because you must um, teach people exemplary lessons if you want other people to stay away from corruption. But if we are unable to punish people who steal billions, especially the politically exposed persons, the big people, if you are unable to punish them, it will energize other people. Other people will feel, well, there's nothing wrong. Let me also steal as much as I can steal. As much as we need to win <coughs> this war against corruption, it has to be said that the strategy is a bad one. I've talked relentlessly here about the incompetence of the EFCC. I remember one day here when I was listing the big corruption cases that the EFCC have lost in recent times. The Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, the Meiji Bakole, um, the former... Femi Fanikaudi. Femi Fanikaudi, the former Works Minister, Hassan Lawa, and so many oh, other judge. cases like that, you know, that they've lost. Somebody called in to say that, oh, why am I criticizing the EFCC? Why won't I criticize the EFCC? For the EFCC to do a good job, it must find the right lawyers. The lawyers must do due diligence. It is not after you started a case that you will now start looking for facts to nail the, the, the person on trial. It will not work because you must do your job, do a thorough job, just as the former CGN said, he said, look, he said, prosecution is like building a house. If the foundation is bad, the house will crumble. So if you do not do a well. thorough job, you are not going to secure conviction. You cannot just, on the pages of newspapers, be telling people that, oh, this person stole so much Media money. That, yes, the EFC the seems to enjoy that. I think they enjoy it well, that's what they do. so much. Yeah. When you pick up punch and other newspaper, you see all kinds of uh, claims. Oh, this person stole this money. This person stole that money. I think this, this, I, think I no a, longer. Is a, is a style that started uh, uh, with um, uh, Ribadu. I no longer get and excited. It it. I no longer get excited when I read those things anymore. Because what is the point? What I want to see is these people slammed behind bars. And if you cannot put them behind bars. And all you can do is just whip up sentiments on the pages of newspapers. You, you are not going to impress me. How did Fao Shen win his case, for example? The judge said he was not told that the person 
whose account they wanted him to freeze was uh, someone who had immunity. Because the moment you freeze the account, you've even, you've, you've even you've taken him to court. For now, you cannot take him to court. You've, you've, you've decided to freeze the account, and you instituted an action against him. That can't happen to a sitting governor. So the, gov the judge who handled the appeal now said ah, that the, the, the initial judge said he did not know that they, they didn't present facts to him to show that this actually was uh, well, uh, I identify uh, his account. His account. Otherwise, he would have said, See, you cannot uh, do this. In the case of uh, Abdulaziz Muhtala and Yaku, you found some money in his account and you were looking for evidence of corruption against the dad. The dad is probably corrupt. I cannot come here and defend, Baba, and defend Baba Memanguru. I will never do that. But at the end of this, you, cannot, you must prove that the money that you found in that guy's account is a product of money laundering. It is for you to prove that. If you can't prove that, the judge will not enter judgment in your favor. Mm. Mayor, I have a problem with um, when a situation whereby the prosecu uh, pr prosecution, pr pr uh, the prosecuting counsel will be an SAN, I profile one, and even a very, very intelligent SAN, and ESCC can barely afford money to get a decent prosecutor, to be, uh, a, decent lawyer. a decent lawyer to prosecute its own case. The defendant, I wanted to say earlier. Okay. Mm. Like, I, I will look at it from this, from this angle. One, EFC is overwhelmed. They don't have the structure to do what they are constitutionally expected to do. So, they don't, they are not diligent in their investigations. They don't have facts. So we see that most of the, where they've, got, where they've achieved success, uh, areas where they, they have play bargain. Mm. Because they don't have enough manpower to be able, or, or expertise, to mm. do proper investigation. That is why most times they rely more on announcing uh, so that they can use that to, to force the other party to do play bargain. Yes. Because if they don't do that, if you go to court, like he said, if you, if prosecution is it's, it's not just for you to allege that somebody is a thief. You must prove that he's a thief. Mm. And if you don't have evidence in the face of the court to prove that this person is a thief, your case will not go anywhere. Hmm. That is part of the problem that they have. Hmm. The second one, I think. Okay. Before you take the second one, let me just quickly go on this break. So that person is presumed innocent until it's proven guilty by courts of law. So I'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. Come back, and we are looking at the cases handled by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the ICPC last week. Within seven, um, 96 hours, I think they lost three, four cases. Mayor, you, you are about making your submission, but at, at the same time, you know, I asked you earlier that maybe the way with all, maybe EFCC is on, on the funded. Are you, are you ruling that? That's, that could be part of it. But what I think is that if you get the best, if you get the best lawyer to prosecute your case and the facts are in there, there's nothing the lawyer there's can do. There's nothing can do. The investigation yes. will even give it is, Yes, it, it is based on what you, the facts mm -hmm. that you have presented to that prosecutor. Yeah. And the problem is that, like I said, they are not diligent enough in investigating these cases. Mm -hmm. That is why they rely a lot on plea bargain. And on the, I, what I would advise the FCC is to go back to the drawing board. When you want to investigate a case, pick them. If it is five cases, if it is 10 cases that won't, you want to investigate at a particular point in time, do a thorough job and make sure you get conviction. Because part of the problem in the war against corruption is that there is no deterrent. There must be deterrent. Mm. When, people, when people know that if I do something, I might go to jail for a long time. Yeah, some people will still do it. Some people will still do it. But, but a lot of people no will say, twice. no, no, I don't want to do that. Mm. I don't want to do that. Lekom, if you, if you, it's not just all a tale of woe for the EFCCO. If you remember the subsidy scam people, yeah. you know, they've been jailing them. Yes. As of last week, a judgment still came out. And this was something under the last administration they've been prosecuting. And now I think they've convicted like five or six of them. Well. Um, Ayo, there is, is a, 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 an area of, of study called statistics. When you have preponderance of something happening over and over, it is possible to overwhelm <laughs> the other angle. 
so that when a lot of people are getting away for free, and then just a few, very small number of people are being convicted, it is very easy to overlook and forget about that. And don't forget something, the anti-corruption war is a campaign. It's a way of getting across to Nigerians to move away from corruption and begin to do the right things. Okay, let me quickly take Nasser. Nasser is calling me from Kwara State. Thank you for joining us, Nasser. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Nasser. Yes, sir. Can I go up here? Yes, go ahead with your contribution. I'm actually. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, this, I want to speak on this uh, anti, uh, anti, anti corruption issue. You see, the fact is, the fact is, the, the city president is not ready to, 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 state, to, to state the situation at hand. I can barely hear now. So if, if we really want to fight corruption, then the third president uh, he must be out of the office. He, he, Okay, I think I, I I get that part. No, no, that uh, yes, that if we want to fight corruption, that the Senate president must. <laughs> it's not going to be as easy as that, Nasir. It's <laughs> not. It's not going to be as <laughs> easy as that. So, these cases. Yes, yeah, so what I'm saying is that you need to have a lot more success stories in order to convince Nigerians that you are serious about this. Now, reading through Mr. President's statement, I was asking myself: Is this an instruction, or is he? Leading with EFCC, is he saying, "Listen, I, I need results"? It should be instructions. It should it's be an instruction. It's just his response to the embarrassment. Mm -hmm. To the embarrassment. Yeah. 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 I would have thought that well, you guys need to do a better job. Into yes, and spoke to them and said, "Listen, I need results, timeline, and I need." As of last week, I think the vice president invited. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I met with all. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. we, we need we need more results. Hmm. in order to, to make it look like we are very serious about this. You know, in, in our quest of, you know, to get results, it's as if the anti-corruption campaign of this administration, uh, you know, it's, uh, a lot of people would, um, would tell you that it has been politicized. Not that government is deliberately politicizing it. You will see anybody, once somebody is in court and the person is naturally, you know, going through prosecution, directly, any PDP sympathizer, we will be behind that person that this thing is I think I have a call from the United States of America. Really? Obafemi. Obaseki. Yeah, Obaseki. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. go ahead with your contribution. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Thank you. I want to thank uh, GD. I want to thank GD very well for work well done. But I want to get it in US when you get paid Okay, listen, in U.S., when you get paid $10 a, a month and they find $2,000 in your account, you have, to, you have to prove it. So, I mean, that judge that they free, you cannot tell me they don't have what it takes to, to, to put him where he belongs. Right. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Obaseki. Thank you for that submission. Somebody said it last week, Justice Arimola was discharged, not acquitted. Yeah. That means he could still, yeah. the same case would still be brought. Yeah, they, and they you know, have the notice of, of appeal. Of, of, um, mm -hmm. of appeal. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not yet to rule. It's not yet to rule because if they, they are saying that they need to prove all those um, foreign exchange and, and, transactions. Uh, I think Obasaki should be told that they didn't find Humongo's money in his account. They found raw cash in his possession. Mm. You know, the judge will not be so dumb as to put so much money in his account. So the case is not. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not exactly like to the analogy. Cash. Yes, that he that he gave. Yes, he gave two um, two thousand dollars in somebody's account. Mm. Account in Nigeria, it's very difficult to trace cash once the transaction and is cash. They don't even. They are not fools. Look at the judges being tried. Some of them went as far as Ghana to receive physical cash hmm. because they knew that the FCC would trace any money sent to their account. Hmm. They are wiser than that. They go as far as Dubai to receive physical cash in dollars. 
So they are wise. So the FCC has to also double up its, its own efforts to ensure that we nail this. Otherwise, Nigerians will lose hope in the in the war against the corruption. Okay. And it's one of the reasons why this president was elected. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was in, in uh, Casina and I was listening to a song by one uh, artist who said, Inkasenka Sata Kagudu. Mas, he said, if you know that you stole him money, you better run because Buhari will nail you. Mm -hmm. He said, Masugudu Sugudu. Those who want to run, they should run. You see, it was what made Buhari popular. Yeah. Now, if Buhari can't get results with this war against uh, uh, corruption, then it is so unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So, he, he, he has to, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. must be done. For me, if you ask me, the extreme suggestion that I'm going to give is that they should flush policemen out of EFCC. Mm. Honestly, let policemen leave the EFCC. You don't need policemen in the EFCC. A situation whereby you say uh, the EFCC must be headed by a policeman, if, uh, uh, and then and the policeman will go and bring in his own colleagues. No, the police don't have that kind of record, even in the Nigerian space, for mm. us to now uh, mm -hmm. uh, put our War no, against corruption. Uh, 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 so if you remove police, okay. I wanted to no, ask that. No. Let me quickly take this call from Bilo. Okay. Bilo is calling us from Taraba State. Thank you for joining uh, us, Bilo. Yeah, good evening, Ayo, Babajide, uh, and Co. Uh, it's, uh, well done for all that you've been doing on this program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add some comments on. Uh, Go the ahead, please. Process. Honestly, uh, we feel a little bit disappointed with uh, the outcome of ESCC cases. Let, let me. Uh, we, we as Nigerians would have thought that uh, the ESCC should be able to prosecute their cases in a much better way. And whichever lawyer that is thought to be good in Nigeria should be brought in in fighting for our nation. Uh, to let cases like this go on, a uh, typical example is the Ademola case and uh, that of the uh, former first lady. Honestly, it's disappointing. This Thank you, Bilo. Thank you for your contribution, uh, Bilo. So, Mayor, on this, no. oh, Jire, you are making your submission and let's wrap up this. And I was asking this. me um, that if we sent the police back, mm, yes. even in well, the EFCC we'll as we speak, mm -hmm. as we speak, there are investigators in the EFCC who are not policemen. Yeah. In today's EFCC. Yes. Okay. okay. In terms of arresting, to arrest, to, you know, because you can arrest and then arrest. hand over. To hand over other people. See, there are people in the EFCC who have been trained, even by Americans and other people, who are not policemen, Forensic but they are investigators. I agree, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You know? Yeah. And the, the, some of those people have shown you greater. But you still need it. That's what I'm saying. You need police to, to, to be able to. You need, you know, to, even you need police to for for execution of arrest. Uh, 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 and sometimes we need so to use forces for that. Exactly. There are private private the prosecutors now, private investigators. And some of these people, private investigators who are not policemen and they yes, do they a can better job. Yes. So I'm saying that look, there's the a lot of. Do you know that the issue of corruption in the EFCC is a big issue? Do you know that even cases get deliberately bungled by EFCC prosecutors? True. So that's the reason. I I get that's the reason why I'm really I'm really scared about the, some of the people, some of the people. I think they, uh, over I there. think it's people better you are say that. Deals, streamlining deals the role of the police. People who are Maybe cutting they can make deals with ultimately. suspects. There are people in the EFCC who are cutting deals with suspects. Suspect. Yeah. So if we identify those people, let them go. Hmm. And yeah, I, I know that right. it's not only the police who can do a thorough the job of investigating. Me, your last take on this? My last take on this is that I, I may be wrong, but I think in some way the judiciary is fighting back. Because now, if you if you because of because of the arrest of these judges and the way and they, the were they were arrested and the manner they were arrested, I think <coughs> maybe I, I feel that the judiciary believes that the executive is trying to make them irrelevant or they do not respect them enough. Them. So or disgrace them. So if you bring a case and there is a loophole in that case, the judge will be more than happy mm -hmm. to throw it away because yes, they want to fight back. I believe so. Exactly. I believe that's part of the problem. So that they are yes, they're they're also, are yes. Leko, final. Well, I think Mr. President has underestimated the magnitude of the problem. And I think he therefore needs to beef up the staff, funding, equipment for EFCC and NCPC. 
funding for EFCC and ICPC. Let me quickly take my final break. When I come back, we'll talk more. Finally, in 2015, Nigeria approached the United States of America to purchase aircraft to prosecute the war against the murderous Boko Haram terrorists in the Northeast. This request was declined because of allegation of human rights abuses by Nigerian soldiers. But today, the U.S. has shown signs of seriousness to sell the weapons to Nigeria. Reports say the attack aircraft will go up to $600 million and Nigeria will stand a better chance of crushing the terror group. What does this really mean? Jide, I know this is your forte. This, what are they selling? What are they going to give us for $600 million? Yeah, um, they are going to sell the A-29 um, attack aircraft, not attack helicopter. But attack aircraft. Aircraft, yes. It's, it's similar, both in the way it's built, uh, to the Jaguar that we use now. Remember, I, I said it some time ago that the Jaguar that we use currently was decommissioned <laughs> 20, 21 years ago or so. You know? So nobody still uses Jaguar. We don't have the right equipment. We don't have the right equipment. Now the Americans are saying, look, and of course, Champ Trump. They are saying, yes, we have human rights issues in Nigeria, but it should not come uh, in the way, it should not stand in the way of weapon sales to this country. And I'm happy that even Democratic senators are getting involved. People, the, McCain, the Republican senators <laughs> are <laughs> championing this idea, and they are getting support they from their global, own um, colleagues. Boko Haram is a global yes. problem. Yes, in fact, they, they're, they're, they're looking beyond Nigeria. There is a, a U.S. senator who said, see, there is no doubt that Nigeria is the most. Uh, important. most important African country. So we can't watch this thing go on in Nigeria. So the, uh, the earlier they sell equipment to us, the better. And once the U.S. Senate is unanimous that, look, go ahead with this transaction, you can be sure that the equipment will be delivered. Of course, the A-29... Uh, Do you have it on shelf? Is, or we have to order for it. Do you have it? You are going to want, once the deal says true, you are going to have to wait for some time. Mm -hmm. Airplanes or even armor tanks are not bought like you buy, buy sweet. That was what Jonathan said, and people were abusing him. But remember, you and I were looking at the story of uh, the Indians who demanded for some Apache helicopters from America. And that's a deal that is four years old. They had been on it for four years old. It's just about I mean, for four years, just about to so be delivered. True. So we couldn't get those equipment quickly then because there is no way it is done that you just ask for uh, maybe uh, 100 uh, helicopters and you expect to be delivered that year. It will not happen. Hmm. So even this one, we've been on this since 2015. But the Americans are saying now that, okay, we want to deliver this. And it shows that President Trump is really determined to help countries that have problems with Islamic fundamentalism. The A-29 is not the best that we can get. Because hmm. when you look at it, you compare with other uh, airplanes in, in that category, is uh, I can describe it as being of low quality in terms of the height that it can reach, in terms of even the payload that it can carry at okay. any time. I'll come back to you. Mayor, now, thank God that Boko Haram, they don't have air power. So, but this will make definitely make the difference. Uh, yes, I believe so. And I think it has to do with um, President Trump's um, determination to fight ISIS. Um, I, it's not as if he loves us, no. But Trump, President Trump is <laughs> determined to fight ISIS. <laughs> and since Boko Haram is an athlete of ISIS, he believes that you have to take, you have to, you have to get people all over the world to partner with you to fight ISIS wherever you can get them, so that they won't have the capacity to be able to fight America. So that's why they are selling it to us. Like you said, let's start from somewhere. I don't even know, we will be able to raise this 600 million. 600 million for a country like Nigeria is not a lot of money. But what I would have- million dollars. Yes, that's not a lot of money. Sure. When, you, when, you, when you can find 9 million in the, in, <laughs> in the home of just one <laughs> government <laughs> official. So 600 million is not a lot of money for Nigeria to afford. But I would have preferred Apache helicopters than A-29. 
because of the terrain, because the kind of it's war that different. we are engaging, Apache helicopters will have been better. Apache will be able to move this, the troops quickly to, to the front, and then they will be able to be able to come lower and then mm -hmm. attack more. Because when you use when you use uh, when you use planes like uh, that, bomber yes. jets, that there's going to be a lot of collateral damage because you have to have fly high. They are going to drop the bomb. Okay. They, they are not laser guided, so there will be collateral damage. Whereas mm -hmm. Apache helicopters could go directly up, I um, for the move to, for the target Position. and then take them out. Mm -hmm. But like like I said, let's start from somewhere because they've denied us a long time. Mm -hmm. And we need, because going to going through backdoor and going to South Africa and going to you, the you black take, market to uh, try to get equipment, arms, you can't get it like that. You don't buy equipment a la carte. You have to, you have to, we have to order for it. Liko, uh, uh, during this time, President uh, Buhari, when he went to the White House, when he visited uh, President Obama, former President Obama at that time, you know, that's a thing about Leahy law still came into, uh, you know, like, it was like a, a stumbling block that you guys cannot get military cooperation from us as long as you continue to violate human rights. Now we have a situation whereby uh, some group are even sending, um, you know, um, groups after Amnesty International in Nigeria, and they're saying that, look, how will you assess our uh, human rights record of our military? Well, I don't know how well I can, apart from reports that we get. First, you recall that an aircraft dropped bombs mistakenly on an IDP camp in, in a place called R A N, -N or something. Ran, ran. Yeah, that's right. They had a Cameroon border, and um, there have been reports also of maltreatment, of mass maltreatment, even rape of women. But listen, Ayo, my my issue is this: as far as I can see, America is about time for America to do business. I will explain what I'm trying to say. Under the President Reagan administration, even though there was no Leahy law, but there was also some provision against governments that do not uh, respect human rights um, yeah. you know, um, rules. Yeah, it's, it's actually a law. There was the Iran Contra. America was not supposed to sell equipment, military equipment to Iran. But America got Israel to sell mm. what they have then America will now supply <laughs> what Israel sold <laughs> to Iran and then get paid and use that money to finance the, the fight against the Sandinistas in uh, Nicaragua, if you remember. Yeah. You remember the, uh, Colonel Oliver North? Yeah. Again, under Reagan, I recall very well Adnan Khashoggi. America, Saudi Arabia wanted the AWACS aircraft and technically Saudi Arabia is an, is an enemy of the state of Israel. But America has interest in the oil reserves of Saudi Arabia. So what did they do? They got, Saudi Arabia government got Adnan Khashoggi, a big arms dealer. You know what he did? He went to one of the descendants of America's third president, President Adams, who then followed him to the White House to speak with President Reagan. He got to the point that Reagan himself, Alexander Haig, were the ones now fighting, lobbying the Congress for approval so that they can sell seven AWACS aircraft to Saudi Arabia. I'm trying to say that America now, don't forget Mr. 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 Trump said something. He said, this is the time to put America back to work again. This is business for America. Just like Mayor says, it's not as if they love us. But this is good business and uh, it's, everything is just right. So they are going to ignore and pretend that there was no leaky leak law. There was no human. Listen, AI has been making noise, and they have been like, just keep quiet. Let's do this business. Then you can make your noise. And people have been sending talks after. But, but I don't even agree that we have human rights abuses uh, in our you know. I don't believe so. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that our military <coughs> is perfect. But the kind of war that we are fighting is if you if you if if soldiers come. If I'm if I'm a commander, if I'm a commander, I have soldiers. I'm fighting Boko Haram, and they are killing my boys or the attack are come. You understand? Naturally, when we want to go after Boko Haram, I would not want them to come back, to come and to have to be in the position to fight me and my boys. So I will want to eliminate them. Completely. But what they are saying is that we should, we, should, we should arrest them 
and make them prisoners of war. It doesn't work they that even way say we have too many prisoners yes, of war. Yes, because at that then time... Then that general that was recalled, they say, why did we recall him? Because yeah. at that time... When there's no serious case against yes, the kind of the kind of war that we were in, there's no way you won't have a business there and there. Jide, uh, my producer is adding another dimension to this. He's telling us that, informing us that 590 repentant Boko Haram militants you know, will be released by the Nigerian army. They've been released by the Nigerian army. Yeah. Maybe they've succeeded in de-radicalizing them. Are we safe, Jide? They are, they've been working on a number of them in Gobe State, for example. There's a place in Gobe State that used to house the NYC uh, orientation, mm -hmm. orientation camp. camp. That's where these Boko Haram guys have been trained, have been de-radicalized. Because you can't just keep people in detention yeah. indefinitely. You have to work on some of them. And we've seen some of them appealing to their colleagues that, look, it makes no sense to continue this senseless war. Why don't you lay down your arms and opt for peace? In fact, the army, the Operation Lafia Dole, organized an event where those guys came out and it was carried live by some Nigerian Tuesday where they were appealing to their colleagues to stop fighting. So I do not see anything wrong in that. We must de-radicalize some of these guys. Mm. And once we've done that, we can now let them uh, uh, integrate them into the uh, uh, society at large. So they will be useful to their society. And they will be good sources of intelligence. Yeah. Mm. And now, mm. you see, the thing is, I, I want to see the Americans give us the right weapons. I saw um, Shekau boasting the other day and saying that two people are talking about Operation Gamma Aiki. You now say, ah, but now Zamo Gamma Aiki, but that this war will not end now. So, Jojin Kusuna so so who tell me that your soldiers want to rest. That's why they are saying Operation Gamma Aiki. <laughs> if we had unleashed if we had unleashed the Apache helicopter with his Hellfire missiles yes. on mm. these animals, mm. honestly, the sound of the, you know what the, the Apache is called? The flying tank. Yeah. Because of his stick ammo. And he can engage a target from 100 miles. Yeah. Mm. So your soldiers are safe. If that's you can engage the enemy Apache from 100 miles, your soldiers are safe. Mm. It is the best attack helicopter ever made by man. Mm. So. Give us some of this. Uh, in fact, if we have just 10 Apache helicopters, mm. if we have just 10, mm. it's, it's okay. Enough. This one, this, this, need, is, this is so inferior to the Apache. Each of these one costs $9 million. Mm. Yes. You know? So it's not, we need something much more uh, effective than that to deal with this guy because the threat that they pose has not ended. Me Everyone knows that. that. Your, your final submission on this? Oh, like I said, we. I think that um, for us to be able to consolidate because we've, we've achieved some, some success in the fight against Boko Haram. For us to consolidate, we need the right equipment. And like I said, it's good. It's a, it's a certain place that we have um, fighter bombers. We have so to we go. Need, we need Look <laughs> 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 on. Well, whatever the government did to get to this point, that America is ready to do what they said, will continue. Hmm. I want to thank you, gentlemen. Mayor, I enjoyed myself. It's quite educating. Babajiri, as usual, uh, top notch. Quite educating. And even Le Conchote, <laughs> from my senior journalist here, I can say I really, really learned <laughs> a lot <laughs> today. And that's it on thank Journalist you. Hangout. Join us tomorrow for another exciting episode of the program. And you can also watch Journalist Hangout on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at TVC News dot TV. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria.